learned her special skills and it's like oh no and you can tell when they're gonna do their trick they like do a power up and it's like all rainbow you're like oh and so you're like oh no 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 i gotta go to my defense but my defense is on cooldown i was like no i'm too late what's up everyone my name is lehua and welcome to the superfina channel where i like to review games by sharing my impressions and how i played the game if you like that type of game reviews don't forget to subscribe so you can see more today we are talking about nino kuni which has been recently ported on the nintendo switch and remastered for the playstation 4 I got the Nintendo Switch version and I already played this game. I got this game when it first came out because Studio Ghibli made the animation and I love anime. I watch a lot, a lot. And I've seen almost all of Studio Ghibli's movies, like almost all of them. I'm not kidding you, almost all of them. I wanted this game not only because of the animation, but because it looked cute. It looked like something that I would enjoy leisurely and just lose myself within the story. Speaking of stories, this game is about a boy named Oliver and he lost his mom and he's going to another world to save her. And this other world is filled with magic, wizards, witches, beasts familiars, fairies, all kinds of magical fantasy. And the reason why he's going to this other world is because there's a connection between this other world and then his world. There are so meets. When something happens to one person, uh, most likely something similar is happening to the other. Then they can somehow help or get something from the other world person other world to help on the other side they are connected so even though one is injured doesn't mean the other one will be too but they'll have something to help and that's where Oliver is he wants to help his mom it's to the point where in battles when we are defeated Oliver does this really sad thing where he says I'm sorry mom it's like oh, oh, oh I failed her oh I I tore apart a mother and her son oh, oh. you feel guilty oh I did I felt guilty I was like oh and after you're defeated it will prompt you to go would you like to continue pay this much as a fee or would you like to go back to the home screen? They take about 10% of your income. <laughs> so we're in this new world. We are traveling around to find Oliver's mom's soulmate. And when we're traveling around, we are getting quests. We are meeting new people. It's an RPG. It's pretty straightforward. We're always prompt to go to a certain place, to a certain go, and we have to go through a journey and fight enemies. And most of our enemies are going to be called beasties. So these beasties, we encounter them and we go into battle. Our battle is sort of turn based. We, as Oliver, we can only cast magic, get provisions, which is usually health or for our magic points, or for any ailments we get from our enemies. We have our familiars. We have familiars. These familiars act as our fighters. First, we're gifted a familiar, but then later on, we're able to acquire a familiar through one of our other characters. The other character is Esther. She'll be able to tame a familiar, and we can gain that familiar and appoint it to one of our players. Because our familiars are our attackers, they're very important, so we need to take care of them. And we take care of them by giving them food to increase their stats, and we can level them up or have them evolve when we acquire such an item that they are compatible with. I learned my lesson from the PlayStation 3 version because what I did was I hoarded all of the food the treats that I would give the familiars because I didn't know who to give it to. I wasn't too sure who really needed them, but now I learned my lesson. I'm just giving them as much as I can whenever I get it. Whenever I get a treat, I give it to the familiars, whoever needs it the most. For example, we have one 
that specializes in evasion. So I'm going to give that familiar the treats that ups the evasion stats. And we have another one who's good at attacking and defending. So I'm going to give those treats to that familiar. Like a lot of JRPGs, we are encountering people throughout the game. And there's a section where we're encountering people that are broken hearted. They are affected by one of our big enemy Shadar. So we have a big enemy. Uh, they are a group of people who want to hinder us. They want to hinder Oliver because he is the chosen one. He's supposed to save the world. And for some reason, they don't want him to be the hero. They don't want him to save the world. And they send out someone named Shadar to hinder him. And this person has been affecting a lot of people. And they become broken hearted. So what happens is they lose something from their heart, which really brings down their energy, their motivation. They just don't want to excel in life. Oliver, at one point, he gets this magic skill where he's able to take a piece of someone else's heart and give it to the brokenhearted. Fortunately, the piece of the heart that we take from someone doesn't affect them. They just feel all oh, nice and warm. Once we give the piece of heart to the brokenhearted, they're just rejuvenated. And we have different features. There's all kinds of pieces of hearts that we can collect and spread it to the world. These magic skills that Oliver acquires will help him throughout the game. He doesn't have to use magic during the battle play. He uses as he's traveling. So there's going to be areas where we need to unlock things like doors, chests, or we need things to grow or shrink. We're going to be acquiring these magic spells that will help us prolong in the journey. The journey is kind of long because Oliver and the team do not run. They are not Fast, and we have to travel places uh, by foot, by boat, by air, and it's not fast travel. We do not fast travel. Even though we're not very fast, fortunately the scenery is beautiful. It is colorful and the music, oh my gosh, the music. The music is composed by Joe Hisaishi and it is amazing. It makes the game so much easier and fun to play because it has that adventure feel. You get that boom in your heart. You're like, yes, I can go out. I can journey. I can explore. Even though I'm running so slow, it's really helpful. It's very beautiful. Something that you can hear in a concert hall. And I am willing to pay that. Now let's talk about the battle play. The way the battle goes is we have our characters and they have their familiars. Our characters each can fight their own way. We have Oliver that has magic. We have Esther that has magic and another type of attack. And then later on we'll acquire other characters that has like a gun, magic, etc, etc. But they also have their familiars and we can control all of them. We can also designate a type of action they're going to do like you are going to do the healing you, you're just going to do the healing i need someone to heal all of us because i don't have time to spend my attention to heal you guys okay or you you person in my team i'm gonna make you defend us just defend 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 you're pretty weak i don't have time for you to keep dying on me or <laughs> we have someone who's like strong like, okay i need you to attack 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 use your strength or you can designate them to attack side enemies or the main enemy whichever one you want to do it's up to you that is strategy we don't have to stay as Oliver during the battle play we can also be the other characters too that's how we control them so the way it works is say that I'm Oliver and I want one of his familiars to fight I'll go to him and then I switch by pressing R and I pick the familiar. The familiar does have a time limit. Fortunately, the game does tell you when it's time to switch. It'll give like a beeping sound. Next, I'll have Esther. She has a familiar too. I want that familiar to fight, so I'll go possess her. I'm calling it possess. I'm not too sure what else to call it. I'll possess her and then I'll 
instruct the familiar to go fight or use magic and so on so far when you're strategizing like that by possessing the different characters and designating their familiars or them telling them what to do it can spread your attention and it can seem kind of challenging because you feel like oh no i gotta defeat the enemy within the time limit like, oh no i gotta do this before i get attacked because there are going to be some times where you can defend yourself but Sometimes when you're too late to defend yourself and the enemy attacks, ooh, you get that damage. You're like, oh, shoot. Oh, speaking of defending. So when we have our familiars, they do have a cooldown where once we use that action, we have to wait until we can use that action again. So I had this problem where I would be fighting the enemy and I'll defend myself. And I'll go back to fighting and then the enemy is about to do a trick. Now a trick is a powerful attack or under special skills and it's like oh no and you can tell when they're gonna do their trick they like do a power up and it's like all rainbow you're like oh and so you're like oh no 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 I gotta go to my defense but my defense is on cooldown I was like no I'm too late! And so I get hit and I get damage. Then I'll go to another familiar who hopefully has a healing skill and use that ability to heal, heal me. <laughs> That's really fun. They don't put too much pressure. You can evade the enemy. You can take your time. You can watch the patterns of the enemy. And then once you know the pattern, you can execute and honestly i don't remember the battle play being that fun when i was playing it on the ps3 i think it's because i played this game before and i'm taking my time with it i'm enjoying it more i'm taking the time to get familiar with the controls the actions the battle play and because now that i have a better understanding it's so much more fun i don't get frustrated anymore in the ps3 i got stuck in the area and i got frustrated and I stopped playing yes that's a no-no but I did I stopped playing and now I'm going back to Nino Kuni this is like a fresh start for me during the game we get to do mini quests mini quests are optional but they really help because we get provisions treats and money not only that we fill up a merit card there's going to be a merit card and whenever we get stamps it helps us fill up and when we fill up also many merit cards it helps us get some bonuses they're minor bonuses boosts but they really help for example there's a foraging one where it helps increase your likeliness of finding things and that helps because there are quests that will ask us to collect some items with that boost in foraging we'll be able to find those items faster and then we'll be able to complete that quest faster and get that money and rewards so everything is connected helping people with broken hearts or mending their hearts are part of the quest we want to help them as much as we can and all these quests they're not hard they're not out of our way some of them they will happen as we go on with their journey for example there's people who are hey i need you to meet this person in also place can you help me and you're like well i'm going there anyway yeah i can help you just gotta go back to that previous destination tell them hey i did this quest and they're like oh thanks here's your reward on this journey along with helping people saving the world there are cutscenes anything that deals with the story there's going to be a cutscene and i anticipate the cutscenes i wait for the cutscenes i try to get to the cutscenes because it is amazing it's studio ghibli come on Cutscenes are like the anime shows. You can literally watch this like a movie and just let you know there is going to be a movie not connected to the game by the way. This game was really well made and I'm so glad that it was created. I'm so appreciative and I want to thank Bandai for giving me this code. I was going to buy this game anyway but I got it and I 
Thank you very much. And that's my super fina review on Nino Kuni ported to the Nintendo Switch. If you guys like this, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Opt for the new notifications on future uploads. If there are any questions, comments, opinions, don't forget to put them in the comments below. Much appreciated. You can also find me on social media at Lehua Superfina on both Twitter and Instagram. I also stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time and Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Lehua and this was my super friend review on Nino Kuni for the Switch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Other than that, until next time everyone, bye!